everyone and welcome back to my channel more morgan if this is the first time that you are here at my channel hello my name's morgan and it's nice to meet you if this is not your first time welcome back and thank you for coming back so today's video is going to be all about tips to survive your first year of doctor of physical therapy let me start off First and foremost, and say congratulations to you if you fall in this category and are about to start your first year. It's truly an honor. You did so much to be here in this position, and it's amazing. So just a round of applause for you all because it really is an honor, and it's so exciting to start your first year. And, you know, you this is probably something that you've wanted to do for a really long time, and you're finally about to start if you haven't already. The tips I'm going to talk about in today's video are just tips that people gave me before I started and things that I kind of found out on my own that I wish someone had told me um, before I started. So hopefully this video will help you out there and um, let's just get on into it. The first tip that I have is to realize that your first year is going to just be a year of adjustment. It just is. Everything is going to be completely different for you. You may have to move to a different location. That's going to be different. You may have to move into a new place. That's going to be different. You may not know anyone where you're going to move. You may not know anyone in your program. So it's not something that you are particularly comfortable with. Um, everyone, you're going to meet everyone and you usually meet them at once. And it can be a bit overwhelming. And... The coursework is completely different than anything you've ever done, as it should be. You are working towards getting your doctorate degree, one of the highest degrees that you can earn. So just realize that this is going to be a year of adjustment. You should have no problem and don't beat yourself up too much because, like I said, this is a year of adjustment. So you kind of just have to figure out everything and go from there. So the next tip that I have is a extremely important one if you are like me and are going into this program straight after undergrad. So realize that you are no longer an undergrad. Probably about 60 to 70% of the things that you did in undergrad will not apply and will not work whatsoever in this program. Believe me, someone gave me this advice and I kind of just put it in one ear and it came out the other, but I soon realized that they were right. There's no way that you can use the study techniques or just any tactic that you picked up in undergrad and think that it's going to be successful in this program. It's just not. Some things, yes, but a majority of them will not um, just because it's completely different. Um, I never did this in undergrad, but I know a lot of people would... Um, like skip a day here and there um, of class, absolutely not. Especially if you are going into a smaller program like mine. Um, it's very clear when you're missing, especially when there are only 40 people. It's very clear when someone's missing. And they take note of that, and that does not look well because, again, you're working your, on your doctorate degree, so you need to be there. More and most importantly is that you need to be there yourself because these classes, the volume of information that they talk about in one class is something that you can't afford to miss. Like, you need to be there. You need to be present and engaged. Not just physically there. You need to be engaged <laughs> as to what is going on in the classroom. So, this next one. The thing that I struggled with and a lot of my cohort members struggled with in the beginning. So, just like I said that you are no longer an undergrad, realize that you're not going to be making those straight A's that you once were. It's just not as intuitive or easy to do anymore. Um, one being that the volume of information that you're tested on in one test is a lot. And there's no way that you can possibly know everything. There's just not. Um, one of our professors told us that you're not going to know everything. So just be confident in what you do know 
and know that really well so you can get those questions right but you it's just there's so much that you're not going to know everything you should know it you should know some of it but you're just I don't really I don't does that make sense I hope that makes sense that you're not gonna know everything but what you do know you need to know really well you need to know mostly everything but I mean sometimes just the way that the questions are asked are really easy to get tripped up on and kind of lose what they're asking about so just remember that you're not gonna make those straight A's you still need to pass you still need to pass um, and depending on your program they have different passing um, grades and things of that nature so I won't go into that too much but you still need to pass because this is going to be your job like you know what I mean like this is going to be your job this is not just a little philosophy and then that you take for a semester and then like it doesn't matter if you forget everything that you learned no you are going to be using this information for the rest of your life as long as you are practicing you are a practicing clinician so you need to know this information and you need to know it really well therefore that's why it is expected of you to know all this information and to do well on the test but and by do well I mean pass but realize that straight A's are not really that practical and that's okay because guess what you're going to be a doctor what so it's okay the next thing realize and this is so important and about this all the time that we still thought that we were like in competition with one another and we weren't um one of the fortunate things about physical therapy um and i'm not sure if it's like this everywhere but at least the schools that i looked into and the schools that i applied to once you get in there is no sense of competition with you and your cohort members i know that for law school there is i have a line sister who just she just actually started law school today, which I'm so proud of her for doing. Um, and they are in competition with one another. But in physical therapy, there is no competition with you and your cohort members. So that's over. You all got in. You all did everything to be here. So there is no more competition with you and the person sitting beside you, which is a relieving feeling that you don't have to worry about like, oh, they made a 90 and I made a 92. Like, you know, like there's none of that, which is absolutely amazing that you are no longer an undergrad. So I know for me, when I was an undergrad, I would start studying maybe a week or a little over a week in advance before my test, which was sufficient amount of time. That was more than enough time for most of the classes that um, I took. And um, then I would go in there and kill it. Um, I tried to do that on my first test in physical therapy school. And it worked. I passed. But it wasn't. I passed. But I realized that that was not going to work all the time anymore. So this tip is to start studying early. And not just studying early, what you really need to start doing is just reviewing every day. So once you get out of class, what you need to do is just like take like an hour or so and like watch mindless television or go to the gym or just errands or anything that's not school related and just kind of just debrief and then go back and whatever the form that you find works best for you, um, review the information that you learned in class that day. So I know one thing that I like to do, I like to re-listen to the lecture. You, as you go, you'll realize that when you really, it's time to study, you'll know a lot versus if you don't do anything and then just like right before the test start going through your notes for the first time. You'll be a lot more successful if you review. Take it from personal experience, been there, done that. I'm telling you, reviewing as you go is the way to go. So this one is an important one. Don't be that annoying know-it-all. Just don't be that annoying, annoying know-it-all. Because one, you're not going to know it all. 
You're just not. There's no possible way that you could know it all. And all you're going to do is just force other people to, like, not really want to be around you and not want to study with you. Like, that's all that you're going to do if you were the know-it-all and when you guys are studying or talking about a topic that you just discussed, that you just discussed in class and then if someone says something off, which is fine because it's a learning process, and then you jump on them as the know-it-all, they're not going, no one likes that, okay? No one likes that. From the beginning of time, I feel like no one has ever liked that. So don't be that know-it-all. Just don't do it. It's not cool and it's just not. And realize that you are not the smartest person in the room. If you are the smartest person in the room, that's when you know it's time to leave the room. But you're not the smartest person in the room because guess what? Everyone is smart. Everyone in this program that you're about to enter is going to be smart because how do you think they got in? Because they're smart. Okay, last tip for surviving your first year is that success comes in numbers. And what I mean by that is you need to form a study group. Now, I will tell you that there are a lot of solo studiers who just, you know, study by themselves and they are successful. But for the most part, you will be more, I know, at least for me, I found that I was more successful in numbers. Just because people learn in different ways and people interpret things in different ways. So it's great to have a study group that you can go to and just talk about topics and just to kind of make sure that you are understanding the information accurately because I know sometimes I think that it's one thing and then I'll talk to my study group and I'm like oh ooh, that's not what I thought it was glad I checked with you guys so just realize that and when you are <laughs> finding your study group this is a funny one but um especially in the beginning realize that it's going to take a while to find the right study group for you because people learn different ways and all that jazz. Everyone's different. So it does take some time to really find your study group. I know even for me, I wouldn't even say that I have like a set study group. In my class, there are like some set study groups of people who typically study together um, all the time, but I would consider myself a floater and I like it that way. I like that I can go to this group and then I'm like, okay, then I go to that group, and then I go to that group, you know. But I kind of like being a floater because I feel like I get more information. And what typically happens is that I'll be in one study group, and then I'll go to a different one. And they'll say, they'll be talking about something like, well, I don't get it. And then I just say what I learned from the other, other study group, and like, and they are like, how did you know that? I'm like, well, I got it from the other study group who got it from this study group, who got it from that study group, and then it's like a full circle, and then we can all get it right. Yay! Which is um, the best thing, because um, I know for me and for a lot of my classmates, we all want everyone to be successful, you know? We all just want to do well. We want everyone to do well, and we want to make it through this together. So, like I said, success comes in numbers. So that concludes all of the tips that I have. So if you have any questions about anything that I discussed in this video, please leave me a comment down below. And thank you for watching this video, and I hope that it helps you. And I hope that you are successful in your first year of physical therapy school, and I wish you all the best. So thank you. Bye.